This is a tweener. So he's trying to do a tweener. So a tweener is when you're sitting there and you see guys run off and they'll like do a backflip and they'll go like that between their legs. Uh, is it really painful? Not if you do it right. Uh, <laughs> if you do it wrong, it can be. All right, cool dad, great kid. We've got a nice little episode for you, an introduction to skydiving gear, wingsuiting stuff, and base gear. So I've got my base rig, my skydiving rig, and my wingsuit. We'll do a quick go through real quick, show you some very high level stuff. Uh, I tried this at first, going over everything, and I'm gonna do a thorough deep dive on just the skydiving rig, because it took me 45 minutes or an hour. There's too much stuff. It isn't complicated, it's just very detailed. And we're hoping to provide you guys with solid, deep, functional learning on this kind of stuff so that you could show up at a drop zone and know exactly what you're looking at, how and why, spot differences in a movie. Um, that's something we'll have, so stick around to the end. I'll make a mention as to why you almost always see skydiving gear in movies, even when they're base jumping, and you'll see why. So stick around. So let's see here. All right, bud, so we gotta get these zipped open. So this large bag right here has my skydiving rig and my wingsuit in it. So there's a skydiving rig and a wingsuit. We'll toss this off to the side. Now, this is nice because it also has a couple jumpsuits in there. So when you jump, you often have an outfit you'd wear. Um, and then here, yeah, these are tied tight. So a little secret knot Sorry, here. Look, do it. Watch this, bud. Look, this is a look, look this slip knot. Watch, you ready? Dad, what like is that. this do? That is actually the cutaway handle. So we'll go so over you, that in a so second. You're gonna pull it? Don't pull it. No, no, no. You don't want to chop daddy's parachute off right here. So this bag is the stash bag for a base rig. So it does two functions. You can carry this. If you're hiking for five hours to get to your drop zone or your exit point, you can have your bat your container in there. And then you fold it up and you put it inside. Oh my gosh, it hurts. It's heavy, right? Yeah. This is about 17 or 18 pounds. It's just under 20 pounds. Do not try and put that on your head. You yeah. might like really hurt yourself. Stash bag gets folded up and tucked in here. So that way when you're ready to jump, you can stuff it in here, make your jump, and then once you've landed, you can take off everything, put it in this, and then wear this like a book bag on the way out so you don't get everything all messed up. So there's that one, the base rig. That one's even heavier, bud. This one's just over 20 pounds. I think it was 21. So for, uh, here, back up, bud. You're gonna be out of frame. Here, come on back to me. You're getting too far forward. So there you go. So this weighs about 21 pounds. A gallon of water is eight pounds. So it's almost the same as carrying three gallons of water. That's how heavy it is. Nice, you're looking good, bud. So here, let's pop this thing off real quick yes, and then we'll, we'll run through it. That right? is also incredibly heavy. It is. So starting with this, this is actually not called your parachute. So if we were out at the drop zone, they wouldn't call this a parachute. Do you remember what I call this? A skydiving rig? Yes, a skydiving rig. <laughs> it's good I used to remember it. Yes, this is a base rig. This is a skydiving rig. Your rig consists of everything. So if you think of sort of like if you had a car and you said, that's my motor. Well, the motor is an important part, but it's really more all-encompassing. So the skydive rig consists of everything. That'll have your main parachute, which is at the bottom half. It'll have your reserve parachute, which will be the top half. It'll be the container, which is basically the book bag with leg straps. That's the container. AAD, your automatic activation device if you have one. Good job, bud. Here. So shimmy the... Hang on, hang on. Here. Grab this and shake it, and that'll fall out. So... Shimmy, shimmy. All right, yeah, set that aside. Now here, let's look at this one real quick, and then we'll get to that one, okay? Wingsuit. Oh my gosh! Pretty cool, huh? Here, set that down and let's go I think it's too big. <laughs> I think it is too big. We'll get to that one in a sec. So yeah. look, bud, here, you ready? So the container is the book bag. This is fully articulated. And again, we're going to go, I'll do a deep dive on this to go over everything, but that means all this can pivot for comfort where this is partially articulated, some aren't at all. So you would put this on, shoulder straps, then leg straps. You would then tighten your chest strap. Here, bud. 
You gotta stand next to me so they don't you don't block them. You're gonna block them. So chest strap, this pulls tight, and then you were asking about these, right? Yeah. So the red sandbag. Yes, that's rings. Your, that's your cutaway. So these three rings are what hold the main parachute onto the container. Because this big ring, they are sewn into the container. And so all the weight holds right here. Well, so you're held up. Your leg what straps about are this carrying your weight. Thing? That is where everything comes together. So the leg strap, the main lift webbing, because these shoulder straps so are called the main lift webbing, my, and this little together? piece. Yep. Wait, what about the yellow? Don't pull it. So the yellow, so what happens is, let's say that you went and you pitch. Pitching is when you throw your pilot chute, which is what initiates the opening sequence. So you can take that and throw it out. Ready? Throw it. There you go. So oh now don't pull any more. So this is your pilot chute. All right, let go, sick bud. So that looks like a tennis or a... What's it called? Uh, like a hacky like sack a baseball. ball or something. Yeah. Those look a tennis or baseball. Nice. Well, let's get back to this, bud. So you've got this. That's your pilot yeah. chute. That all comes out. Rubber band. All right, back up. you got to get out of the way of the, of the video. Rubber so, band. That bridle. Here, hang on. Look. Watch this. The bridle comes up, and then it would pull your main pin. We're not going to pop this because that will open the whole container up. But uh, this pin is what holds it all shut. What about this? This is the reserve pin. So what happens is this is how you would normally initiate a primary opening for your normal main canopy. We're going to close this up, and this is a straight pin with a little safety check. Now hang on. Here, don't hit that. So that's your reserve. So watch. So remember how you asked about this red thing? Yeah. That's your cutaway. Now, if it all goes wrong, we pull this. That pulls those yellow things, which are in this hard housing, which pulls pull this to cut this? away. Wait, do we pull this here? Don't do it right now. No, 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 because then we'll cut away Daddy's parachute. So the three rings are a leverage reduction system. And so the big ring is always hooked to the container. It's always there. These two large straps are your reserve risers. So if you do have to cut away and the reserve comes out, that's those. But basically... There's a little piece of fabric that is a two to one leverage reduction. A little ring is a 10 to one. The medium ring is a 10 to one and the big ring stays. So 10 times 10 times two is 200 to one. You could hold this little piece of fabric right here with 10 pounds of force and hold back 2000 pounds of force because it's 200 uh -huh. to one. Okay, so here's the risers. We'll tuck them back. Everything in skydiving is tuck tabs, Velcro, rubber bands. And uh, that's about it, container and, and lines. So it's very simple. That's the chest strap. So the chest strap comes through, goes back, and like a motorcycle helmet, tucks through again. That way these can't pull off your shoulders while you're in free fall. And then once you deploy, you can actually open this up because it'll fly nicer when it's sitting wider. So that's your chest strap. Okay. Hang on there, Hoss. Yeah, you want that to be able to stay. So, and... Like I said, a primary parachute gets deployed. If that all goes good, great. If you do have to do your cutaway, you'll then pull this for your reserve. That is in another hard housing and comes up to this straight pin. It's the only pin on any of these containers that is straight because you pull it out linear. And it only goes up to here. Yep, just that little loop of fabric. So there is the primary stuff on a skydiving rig. Do you want to put it back on me? And see well, do you want to go over the base rig? No, I want to see okay, what well, here, it looks you, like. Okay, well, here, you plop what? this on. Okay. All right, there we go. So, so Bodhi's flying, and all of a sudden he throws his pilot chute, and flack. Opening. The opening is about three to four Gs. Mm -hmm. Hey, come back here, bud. You're out of frame. Is about three to four Gs for about three to four seconds. Here, come back this way. We can't go and pull this, because it'll actually open up the container, and the parachute will fall out. So, here, let go of that for a second. Uh, all right, let's set this down, because we got to get to the next stuff. So we'll set this one aside for a second. That's the skydiving rig. One pin for your main, one pin for your reserve. Now we're going to talk about the, the base rig. So again, this is a rig that includes your parachute and everything. The container is the book bag. The container has a chest strap. The container has leg straps. This one was fully articulated. So this ring, all three of these points could pivot. This one is partially articulated. So this is sewn in hard, doesn't move, but the leg straps can pivot. You'll also notice how wide this sits. It's gonna be less comfortable than this where they're cut in a bit. But 
doesn't much matter. So when you go, you would put all this on, tighten down your straps, tighten down your chest strap, make your jump. Now, once you jump, as before, you'll throw a pilot chute. Now, in base jumping, everything is rigged different or set up different for different length delays. So you've got zero seconds, two, four, six, and eight, basically. If you want to think simple stuff, every couple seconds is different because you can use three different sizes of pilot chutes. That's what I have. I've got one that's about the same size, about 30 inches, a 42, which is kind of the jack of all trades, which is on it, and then a larger 48. The slower you're falling, the shorter your fall time before pitching, the bigger of a pilot chute because you want a consistent snatch force. That is how hard it tugs the parachute out. If it pulls out too slow, you're going to get off headings and it's going to delay the opening. And if it pulls out too hard, you'll strip it where basically you yank real tough and everything comes undone. And again, you'll have off headings and you have issues. Beyond just the pilot chute, you have the slider. You can go slider up. You can have a slider up that's a big mesh, that's a tiny mesh, that's a tiny mesh with, with additional cross bracing so it's even slower, or even a solid sail slider that's a main, like a normal skydiving one, that would be the slowest opening because air can't get up through it. Same deal on the pilot chutes. You have big mesh, you have small mesh, um, and then you can tie to the object. So there's a multitude of ways for how long you're falling. Anything past eight seconds is terminal, so it's all pretty much rigged the same for simplicity's sake. But again, so we jump off, you ready? So you jump out, you throw your pilot chute again. Do you think I should get in it and like throw it out? Sure. Here, just put on the shoulder straps. You don't need the leg straps, you ready? Yeah. All right, so now can you, can you find it? I don't know if you can even reach yeah. down and get it. Here? Yeah, way, way down. <laughs> Here, I'll hand it to you, you ready? Can you take it? Now you okay. pitch that thing. There you go. All right, here, let's set this down again. Here, hop on out. Good job. There you go, pitch it. So we'll pull this back. And again, we don't want to tug this because it'll open up the whole container. So again, here is a 42-inch mid-sized base, base pilot chute. It's larger to catch more air. It's got a, a really large mesh so that it can stay in there. And again, uh, that's what you, what you throw out. And why does it have this little white dot? Here. So this center is vented because, again, here, scooch off the side, bud. It's so incredibly important. If this pulled to one side or the other, it can pull the parachute out. And your pack job, you could have an off heading. In base jumping, far and away, the single most important thing in base jumping is on heading openings, right? So you want to open facing the way you want to go. In skydiving, you want to open on heading. But if you have a 180 and you face backwards or you have line twist or you open left or right, it doesn't matter. In base jumping, if you just jumped off a 300-foot cliff and you've only jumped out 10 feet from the cliff, and these parachutes, this one is a 266, it's about 12 foot deep and 23 feet wide. Big. So this is about a 2 to 1 aspect ratio, twice as wide as it is deep, where my skydiving rig is about a 2 and a half to 1. So it's about 7 and a half by 20. This is about 11 and a half by 23. Think about that for a room, how big that would be. And then the material is slippery, like a Walmart bag. It's super thin, super slick. That's what all these parachutes are made of. And you just have hundreds of square feet of nylon because you've got the top skin, you've got the bottom skin, you've got all the divider cells. This will be a seven cell parachute. So instead of having nine tubes of air, it'll have seven. It'll be a little bit taller. Like I said, the aspect ratio is different. And you want that for when you go to fly in because you might be out in the middle of nowhere and you need to land in a 100-foot circle surrounded by 80-foot trees. So you need to be able to sink that thing in right where you need or you could get hurt. And so that's why they set this stuff up. Now, the other things they do to try to ensure an on-heading opening, you have two pins. There's no bag you're basically jumping a reserve. So with this, you don't need a main and a reserve in base because you're basically jumping the reserve. That's actually what they jumped before they had base-specific rigs. The first base number, base number one, so two, three, four. Hmm? if you pull this, what will happen? It'll pop open, so we don't want to do that. So oh, it looks like mention in the comments, if you want to see me go and tug this and pop it all open, Make, make mention, because then I'll have to repack the whole thing and put it back in. But, uh, yeah, that will take a long time. I know, right? But uh, anyway, so... So it will be fun watching him just roll his heart. Exactly. So you've got this. The parachute starts coming out. Now, it's not in a bag. It doesn't have all the clicking stows, all the rubber bands clicking the bag out. What it has is a tail pocket, which is a little 
Velcroed part that you S fold the lines. So all the lines meander back and forth over each other. And you do them in a gradually. Here, watch out, bud. You're sitting in front. So you would do this and you would sort of S fold them where the S would get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So it can extract clean. And then once that happens, you would have a tailgate, which is. I have a tailgate right here. Like this? Exactly. So this will be holding together your center C and D lines. So your rear riser, the C's and D's dead center, and your brake lines. That way when the parachute opens, the front opens, and then it flicks out. What about because this? Because that is actually for if you tie off to an object. This is how you can take it with you. So you would tie this onto your bridle, and there's breakaway cords. So this is engineered 80 pound brake cord. So if you were 200 foot up on an antenna, and no one there to help you, and you had to tie to the antenna, this piece of uh, yeah, line... Yeah, I'm for a second. Here, look. So this piece of line would loop over the railing, right? And then these two pieces of brake cord, one is short and one is long, so there's a redundancy. So it goes pop, pop, so that you have two chances to get everything out. This is hooked into your bridle. And so when you jump, you would... Open your container, pull your pins, get the line stretch, begin to open, and then the brake cord would go pop, pop, and they would break, and then this would be followed and taken with you, so you don't leave it on top of the antenna. So that's what that is. Don't flick that. It's got a metal thing uh, on it. When, when it was in the first place, it would used to look like a bunch of these little things with these white strings. Mm-hmm. Nice. So anyway, so that's how, well, something you'd use for that, but this tailgate is wrapping up a whole bunch of lines. They're all passed through it and it's sewn onto one line. When you jump, this elastic, this rubber band pops off and that ensures an on heading, or yeah. helps ensure an on heading that opening. That really do anything, just like a rope. Well, it would though, if you saw, once we get the parachute out. So you'd have to get the parachute out, so they're gonna have to be able to make their comments. Yeah. So, opens up. Now, when you go to reach for your toggles, you may or may not have a slider. So here's an example of a, Fine mesh slider. So fine mesh, they make large mesh, they make the ones like I mentioned that have the same tape, a couple extra strips to slow it down. That's a sail slider. So that would be your softest So these opening. are both sliders. Correct. And so these four grommets... They look like flags. They do, right? Don't flick yourself in the head with that grommet. So you've got your front and rear line sets of your left and right riser and all the lines would pass through this. When you open, this would be at the top and then this would slide down as the parachute opened up and then that's how you can slow that opening because if you went terminal packed for zero delay so your slider off or slider all the way down already and you you know whether you did the the big pilot shoot or the little pilot shoot it isn't going to matter if you have no slider and you are terminal it will explode open people have had ribs broken broken bones in their body the lines will snap and these little teeny teeny tiny lines I'll show you on the deep dive for this one, are small, but they hold hundreds of pounds a piece, and they'll blow out. So you don't want to do that. So you want to ensure you use the proper stuff. Here, back up, bud. You've you're, got to be stand right here. So, but here's an example of a couple sliders. So a fine mesh slider and a sail slider. So you opened up, you've got this big parachute, and oh no, you did a slider up jump because you were out in the middle of nowhere in Norway, and you did your long tracking dive. What does that look like? What? When you do a slider up jump. So it would look just like this, but when you go to open, it would have the slider up so it would slow the opening. So it would be like... Yeah. You're basically slider down or slider off until about three seconds normally. Um, so once you get beyond that, four to five seconds is kind of an awkward zone because you're fast enough to need a slider, but it's not a high energy opening. So usually you, you like to try to keep it at around, you know, zero to three or maybe six and over. But again, that's minutia. So you jump out with this, you have your parachute, and you notice there's a line. Your brake line is going over the whole parachute. Well, there is no cutaway. You're super low to the ground. You have to get rid of it. If you were slider off, you can just let go of the toggle because the toggle won't even go through a slider, so you can just let go of it. Now, you won't have that brake anymore because it'll be streaming behind you, but if you do that and let's say that you have slider up, well, now all of a sudden you've got this malfunction and you're falling down, they have called WLO, what line over. So there's a line over is when you have the line go over. Those have a little piece of Velcro and you pull a pin and the string pops out. Dad, can I throw this? Just make sure you're good. 
There you go. Here, back up, bud. Make sure you don't go stepping on this and pulling the pins and all that jazz. You got it between your legs. This is a tweener. So he's trying to do a tweener. So a tweener is when you're sitting there and you see guys run off and they'll like do a backflip and they'll go like that between their legs. Uh, is it really painful? Not if you do it right. Uh, <laughs> if you do it wrong, it can be. Did they die? They could. So imagine if you do this and it ties around your leg, what if you just jumped from 300 feet and it's going shh, boom, and you hit the ground. So that's why things like that, doing backflips, front flips, gainers, doing tweeners, if you go like this, you got to make sure you get it right. And what is, yeah, it's, so. if we get a run and do a backflip. Correct. Here, so let's make sure we don't step on this. So here, drop that thing down, set that down. Okay. So that was the base rig. So we'll set this one aside. Again, interesting stuff, lots of minutia. Maybe get into that another day. So the final this. thing is the wingsuit. Here, bring that over here. This is my dad's. <laughs> yeah, it's either that one fail. So me. here's the wingsuit. I'm only six. Always a crowd favorite. Oh, uh, Dad? Nothing why else is this like it. Thing sticking out. That is another cutaway, just like these arm cutaways. But so why again, is it sticking out? Your because there's no other back. way to retain it unless it hangs out the bottom. So if you had it shorter, it might go and come undone when you don't want it. So here, let's set that down. So you sit off to the side and we'll go over this. So the wingsuit has arm vents, leg vents, and when you flip it over, the back has arm vents and leg vents. Everything pressurizes, just like all these parachutes make a wing shape. It pressurizes to create an airfoil, so while you're flying, it's actually generating lift over the wings. Now, this has this extra piece to even increase that effect and smooth out this the leading edge like of the wing. This like fiberglass, kinda. Yeah, it's just a hard foam. Yeah. You need to put your parachute on. You need your leg straps inside, but you need access to all your toggles and to be able to pitch and the book bag hanging off the back, right? So what they do is, you'll see there's an opening here, oh. and then there's also an opening down here. And so the whole wing will zip off. When you zip the whole wing off, here, back up, bud. Once you zip the whole, here, back up a sec. So once you zip the whole wing off, you'll have access, and we'll unzip this, Wait, like Bodie mentioned. Was this for that was the tailgate. This, was this for one of the parachutes or for the skydiving? Crew? That was for the base rig for your tailgate to help the ensure. Base rig? Base rig. To help ensure that the back stayed shut and then as it pressurized, the front folded back, folded to the front. Because normally, if you think about it, if air is getting forced in, it would want to inflate the back first and the front would be together and then the front could snap off crooked. So you want to promote a rear uh, or a front first opening that pulls the rear over. And, so, and this is like a human and this is like it's parachute. Yeah. Don't throw that in here with the lights. Yeah, That's no. the largest. We, we actually, yeah, so we actually go out that. and throw this and yeah. have the parachute drag the ball. Yeah, and I try to Again, a it. huge pilot chute for if you're doing really low jumps. Yeah, this is this like, is, like this is like a, a big round skewer. That's like a parachute. Yeah, that, that yeah. basketball. Here, let's toss this, this off to the side and focus this, on this, this wingsuit for a sec. It, that's going to be one of our, our videos. Exactly. So here, so leave that there. So you've got... The big zips to get into the into the wingsuit. Both sides have a wing, and both sides have a leg. So you would take the wing off, feed your leg straps through here. The parachute could then have the base strap and the main lift webbing come through here. You'd put the parachute underneath this, put it all in. Here, hang on a sec, bud. And then once everything's in, and the parachute's underneath it, you'll step on it, sit in it, lay down, put it on, do your leg straps, zip into the, the whole thing, do your chest strap, do all that, and you're ready. And then once you have that and you jump, you would be flying down. It's like flying a fighter jet. Uh, Dad? Yep. What about this? Well, we're going to get to that in a sec. Okay. So you jump, you're flying for a while. You're doing about 100 mile an hour. So it, you're boogieing, and you just want to have your arms slightly back. You want to have your hips slightly bent and it's time to pitch. Now, unlike with these, with these, you can just toss because anything you leave out, you would want to get blown over because of the wind. So you have, if you just reach like this, you get blown over when you throw your skydiving gear. Same thing in base jumping. In a wingsuit, it's 10 times more because you have all that fabric and that fabric is shaped like a wing generating lift. 
So if you Wait. go flip over. Does have webbing? Yes. Well, this has webbing. See this? Oh. It reaches down by your hip. So yeah. what you want to do webbing. is you need to be symmetrical, and you don't want to reach back out more than you need. So while you're flying, ready like this? You're flying along, and it's time to pitch. You would want to go and you break down your leg wing, you reach back both hands symmetrically, and then you flick your wrist and go back. There you go. Not full arm, because that's the mistake you'll make. That's what I did when I first started. I would do my whole arm, and if one arm caught one half second of air, it would whoop and start to flip you over. So now you're flipping over in a straight jacket, skydiving. No fun. So just do a flick like that. Yeah, flick that, and then whoosh, you'll feel it. Now, like I said, a few seconds for an opening. So while it's deploying, you want to go and look up, and you can put your arms up because they can only reach to about here because you have wings on. So you can go and get to your cutaways. You can't get to your risers, but you can get to about here. And so right as you pitch, you'll feel it stand you up. You'll reach and you'll grab and unzip this arm and unzip that arm. And you can do it while the parachute is hunting to open up. So by the time it's fully open, you usually have your arms out already. And then you'll say, okay, everything looks good. You can go and unsnap your leg, unzip your leg, snap it up unsnap the foot, zip it up, because these are designed to hold the little booty shut and the legs were zipped, and then this would come up here. Oh, uh, do you think we should do the front yet? I think we're good. So now, they're about here, so you're not tripping over it, because even with this, the leg wing is near the floor. On the big suits, the arm wings can go down to your feet and the leg wing can extend past your feet. Now, if you're doing a base jump, you might not care, and you just land standing on it. If you burn a hole through it in a few years, you'll send it out and get it fixed or get a new one. But no need to if you don't need to. If something goes wrong, there is a cutaway on each arm. There's also a cutaway on the leg wing, because again, you need emergency stuff. Here are spare cutaways, because if something goes wrong, you won't be able to keep jumping the rest of the weekend. Even the helmets. Here's an altimeter, tells you how high it is, wear it on your wrist. Here's you know another that? helmet that you use. That's my base jumping helmet, yeah. Helmet, so that you can go and mount cameras basically. The rest, Don't hit your head inside the, the plane. The rest are bicycle, dirt bike, and street bikes. Correct. So, old school, jumping back when you jumped Sony Handycams. My first uh, camera was even bigger. I think GoPros. this was for camera. Correct. Right. So, if this goes, imagine if I'm flying, hey look. And I go to do something, and as I pitch, whether in my wingsuit or whatever, imagine if the strings get tied to this. They get tied to the GoPro, and I have no way to get rid of this canopy. And I'm falling at 80 mile an hour instead of 120. That's no good. Well, again, if I'm being Dad, hung up by my head, go for it. <laughs> there you go. So, look, even this has a cutaway. You can pull this and cut away the chin strap well, to get rid of the helmet. There you go. You're all set, bud. Wing suit assembly. So I've sped this up two and a half times. You saw me unzip all eight of the main zippers. You use six of them normally jumping. This step for the wing is just so we can install the rig into it. So you'll see I lace my arm behind that little pocket piece of fabric, bring in the leg straps. That sort of covers over the articulation. Then we'll go and we'll zip the wings on. It takes a few minutes to build this thing and tear it down, but it's not bad at all. It's pretty quick. And you only need to do this if you are changing from wingsuiting to just normal skydiving again. People often ask if you need a parachute when you wingsuit, and the answer 100% is yes if you don't want to get hurt <laughs> because you're still coming in fast on a wingsuit. So put the parachute on. So we got our rig bolted in. Now we're going to sit down, do our leg straps, make sure those are laced in as we put our legs through the leg openings. Sitting on the ground, throw one of the main lift webbing shoulder straps over and try to stand up with 20 some pounds on your back. Start fixing the excess fabric, get it neatened up a bit. And then first things first, you wanna symmetrically tighten down your leg straps. They don't need to be super tight, but that, that is what carries you. So get them nice, tuck away the excess fabric. Then we can zip into the main body of it. That's how you'd be walking around, getting ready for a load. You'd have your leg straps snapped up on your hips normally. Uh, then we're gonna do our chest strap. Now we're pretty much ready. Our load gets called. We'll zip in our leg wings so that when we get on the plane, we're already good. Do the snaps. That way they're carrying the load, not the zipper. That's also what we use when we're finished deploying to snap them on our hip. Once you're in and the plane's already getting ready to, to jump out, then you'll zip in your arms. You'll see my arms can't go very high. My thumbs are through little thumb hoops. So even if I wasn't holding my little grab handles, I still can tension the wing off my thumb. 
time to deploy, you break down, you pitch, it'll be opening for about three seconds. You can grab your arm zippers, open those up, and by the time the canopy's there, you can reach up to do anything. Still can reach your cutaways if need be. We'll zip back in for a sec. So again, point your toes, get ready. There's how you can reach back. You need to make sure if you're flying, especially a bigger wing, you don't grab fabric. You grab the little handle to pitch. So we can reach up a little bit, sped it back up, arm vents, leg vents in the front and the back. You'll see the little piano hinge for the cutaways of both arms. The handles for those are at the end. Normally on deployment, you'd open your chest strap a bit after you do it. Oh, I forgot one thing. So you would normally deploy, then you would go and unzip your legs, kick it off, snap them up so you don't trip yourself when you go to run in landing later on. You can loosen up your chest strap, stow your slider. And then when you're finished, you'd land, walk away, take all this off, drop it in the packing area, and pack the rig just as she sits. There's your overview. So demystify skydiving and base jumping stuff. Very, very interesting, very cool. There's nothing you'll ever do like it. Um, you know, I went and raced dirt bikes, four-wheelers, snowmobiles, I rode street bikes, I have a 700 horsepower car, and even with all that, there is nothing like this. And as you see, this says S1. Exactly. Yeah. So, even with all that, there is no analog. Talk my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister-in-law, my wife, and three dozen friends into it, too. And they'll all say they may or may not ever do it again, but it's like nothing else you've ever done. No falling feeling, no queasy roller coaster feeling. You're just hanging out. Now, helicopters, yes. Base jumps, yes, because you're accelerating. But Skydivings. Nope. Vector change. No acceleration, no deceleration. You just caught by air, like laying on your belly. Well, the last thing I had mentioned, we're going to tell you why in, sky in movies they always show skydiving gear. Stand that one up for me, bud. Here, so let's make sure we don't pull the pins. Yeah. Stand that up. Face it. Here. Oh, no, don't put it on. Here. Stand behind it. Stand behind it. So, look at how boring this looks, and look at how much is going on here. So, a giveaway is normally, if you watch a movie and they're base jumping, they won't have these. They would not be jumping a skydiving rig, which means they wouldn't have exposed three rings. I'm sure somebody somewhere may have a base rig where the three rings are exposed. A lot of them don't have them at all, and the ones that do are normally folded backwards and hidden. One less snag up, uh, point. So, if you see this, that means they're either editing it out and the real base jump is done with a different parachute or it's all CGI, but three rings do look neat. And if you had to pick one and walk out, this one someone might think is a book bag. If you walked by and all you see, here, hang on, don't lean into it. So all you see is this, it just might be thought it's just a book bag. But you walk out with this, you got the circle, you got all this going on, you've got three rings, you got chest straps and bright grab handles. People know that it's a, it's a skydiving rig. So. That's the secret. I hope you liked it. And Please, the parachute. The pilot shoot, yeah. Please be <laughs> sure to like, share, and subscribe. We're going to be bringing a lot of videos like this. Uh, but we need your help to go and get them out. So. And smash that subscribe button. Smash that subscribe button. So let's see how that went.